Thank you. Thanks for having me back again this year. It is a little different. And uh, like uh, Dr. G has said, we are going to be doing this in three. So I'm going to try to get through this really quick, kind of give you guys a background on what Enid Buzz is, where it came from, why I did it. Um, and, uh, and so, and then that's going to lead into why we're trying to build Enid's dream team as far as marketing and media. Um, I grew up in Enid, Oklahoma in the 1970s. And so that created two passions for me. And one of them was Enid and the other one is the 1970s. And as a kid growing up in Enid, there was uh, things that I didn't know about. One of them was business, and the other was the word entrepreneur. I'd never heard it as a kid. But what I did know as a kid, that I could buy two cent Jolly Ranchers at Fitzsimmons convenience store and take them to Waller Junior High and sell them for five cents, and I made money. And I thought that was the coolest thing. And then the next thing I realized was if I could talk my best friend into doing magic shows with me in my garage, we could charge the neighborhood kids 25 cents to come see the shows and make even more money. And what's really cool, and aside real quick, I just found photos of me and my buddy in the garage doing those magic shows within the last month in my mom's photo albums, 45 years, and I didn't know those photos existed. So, so I knew that I enjoyed, I didn't know what business or entrepreneurism was, but I knew I enjoyed making money having money and not having to have a real job. And so, so I got to thinking, um, where did that come from? And I think uh, that there are some people that are born to be entrepreneurs and there are people that are born not to be entrepreneurs and there's nothing wrong with either one. But if you weren't born to be an entrepreneur, it's gonna be difficult for you. For me, it was easy. I, I, I didn't even know what I was doing, but I, I had a drive to do things on my own, to learn things, to figure things out. And that was where uh, making extra money came from. So basically from junior high on until this day today, I've always had a side gig. I've never once in my life not had a side gig. If you follow me, uh, I've got a, another business, a side thing, a podcast called That Buzz Guy. If you follow me on there, you know the number one thing I, I talk about is for everybody to have a side gig. But I wondered where did that drive and that determination come from? And I asked Dr. G, you know, what, what is the theme about? And he kind of explained that it's about legacy. And I got to thinking, and literally only until now did I realize that, that my mom passed down her legacy to me. Now, I, I had the drive, I have the gene, whatever the entrepreneur gene is. But so my mom was a single mom raising two kids in the 1970s, had a great job out of Vance but she wanted to make sure that me and my sister had everything that we needed and she wanted to send us to college. And so she started side gigging after work and on weekends from her Vance job. And she would do a lot of posters and artwork for Gaslight Theater back in the day. And then eventually she started her own craft business and she did it out of the bedroom. We had a small house that we rented and she did it out of her bedroom in that house. And she would take designs that she came up with, draw them on wood, jigsaw them out in the garage, sand them, paint them, turn them into necklaces, bracelets, decor, package them, label them, and then mail them off to these craft shops through the late 70s, all 80s, and early 90s because craft stores had become really big back then. And so to me, it was just an everyday thing. It was like, you know, mom goes to work, comes home and does crafts, and that's just way the way I grew up. So it for some reason, it never occurred to me that my mom was an entrepreneur, but so that's where that kind of came from. And so that determination and that drive followed me all through high school, college, and into business. And like I said, even, even in uh, college and even every business that I worked for, I had a side gig and it usually had something to do with graphic design, cartooning, web design. Once we got into the era of web and digital, then it became web design and stuff. And so uh, I, I left Enid, uh, they've talked about that today, and I was one of those guys that came back to Enid. So I came back to Enid after being away for a while, having worked in Oklahoma City, and I became the advertising director here for a, a retail store here in town, retail chain. And I did that for over 10 years, but the entire time that I was doing that, I was learning computers, the internet, software, on my spare time while I was working for this company, and then even after hours, I transferred that into a graphic design business that I did on the side. And eventually, after over 10 years, I started having kids and I was able to take my kids to work with me. And so I would work and I would rock my kid. I had two, two babies, 17 months apart, and I rock them in the rockers with my feet while I typed on the computer and did my work. And after a little while, I realized that I was, I was eventually making more money with my side gigs than I was getting paid in my job. So I went to my boss and I said, I'm gonna quit 
and go work for myself at home, but I'll still do your advertising. You'll just be one of my clients and you won't have to pay me. So I went home uh, in the early 2000s and uh, raised my kids. I got to stay home every day with them, took them to school every day, picked them up every day from school. And so for over 10 years, I did my own business and it was in, in that mix. I went to the School of E-Commerce and took classes from Dr. G and we went to Comdex in Vegas and did all kinds of cool stuff, learned all kinds of neat things. And I put all that into practice and started building websites and eventually got up to 100 websites by, by the mid 2000s because what I figured out was I could build a website, get it ranked really high in Google, put advertising on it because it got a lot of traffic and I could make a lot of money. And within that realm in 2005, I thought, well, let's take my two passions, uh, the 1970s and Enid and create a blog. And so it was just kind of a personal blog that I did on the side. And so 2005, I bought and I started HTML, built a website. Uh, enabuzz.com and the point of that was to to relive my memories and share them with other people and so when I was a kid I remember Enid had a zoo and it had a monkey pit that smelled really really bad <laughs> and everybody that, that went to that zoo in that monkey pit will remember that in a second we had a oil refinery called Champlin oil refinery in Enid and if you drove by it or the wind was flowing the other way you could smell it all over town we had stores like Wackers and Woolco, where I bought my 45s from. We had Tri-State was huge back in the day. The rides were downtown in the middle of the square. We had hundreds of bands that would come to Enid. They think, be, by the way, Curtis, they think 45s are guns. So you have to have to explain. 45s are the, 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 small, the, the, the small records. We would, we would get those at Woolco. And, and, and things just as small as, I remember being a kid and eating it in the 70s, and the trash bin came to the back of your house. Everybody had an alley, and we had these big metal drums, and that's, you put your trash in the drums, and these guys would physically pick it up and dump it. So, but anyway, I would post this stuff on Enid Buzz, and people would chime in, and, and they remembered, and so I started digging up old pictures of Enid, and it cruised along for a while, and I had this big thing going, like Dr. G said, and I had... I had SEO down, search engine optimization. I was the king and I could rank a website for any word I wanted to and make it all kinds of money. And then 2012 came along and Google decided to hire a guy named Navit Panda from India. And they said, Navit, all these guys out there have figured out every algorithm we've come up with and they can all get their websites ranked and they're all spammy and we want them out of there. Can you come up with an algorithm that they cannot figure out? Well, Navit did and they called it the Panda Update. It wasn't named after Panda, it was named after his last name. So the Panda Update came along in 2012, March of 2012, and I woke up the next day after the Panda Update and I was unemployed. All my websites had lost all their ranking, uh, all my clients quit calling because nobody could find me, everything was gone. Of course, for, for a couple of days, I thought it was a glitch. Uh, about a, after about a week, we figured out that it was a new algorithm change multi-million dollar companies that relied entirely on e-commerce were going bankrupt. People were having to quit their internet jobs and go get real jobs. I tried for a good six to nine months to figure out the Panda algorithm update and it's it's hard to explain, but it's, it's built on a different set of factors than it used to be. It used to be built on things that you did on your website, whereas now it's built on things that you do, your search history and, and things like that. And so it's just things that we can't control anymore like we used to be able to. So, so in, in uh, 2013, I had to figure out what was I gonna do? Because the money wasn't coming in. My wife was like, uh, are you ever gonna get a paycheck again? And so I had to figure out what I wanted to do. Well, luckily, I had all these side gigs going on. And the reason that I keep talking about side gigs is, think of all the people in the last year that thought they had a job they would never lose. All these restaurant people, all these people that had restaurants for, you know, their families had restaurants for 200 years. They're all unemployed. The ones that didn't have side gigs were left unemployed and still don't have anything to do. But if you have these side gigs going, at least there's something there to maybe lean on. So I had web design, I had graphic design, I had cartooning, I had Enid Buzz. And so I thought, what, what can I do? I didn't want to go get a job. I'd been well into 12 years working for myself and I was not going to go get a job. And so part of the legacy of my mom was she instilled in me that whatever you try, you're going to be successful at. It never occurred to me that I couldn't make Enid Buzz be a, a job. I mean, it just, I, I just figured that's the one I want to pick. And so I went about making that my job. 
it just never occurred to me that I couldn't do it. So anyway, so I rebuilt Enibuzz. Uh, it was an old HTML website. I rebuilt it with WordPress. I added a, a calendar, restaurants, photos, business directory, obits, jobs. I've recently added the forum, but um, you know, made it a robust website. Social media came along just at the right time. I uh, had the Enibus Facebook page going. So once I, so my deal is once I start something, I'm committed to it. And when I started Enibus, I was really committed to it. I was posting and updating every day on the website. When I started the Facebook page, I literally started updating every hour. So since 2013 on the Enibus Facebook page, it's been updated every hour of every day up until today. I've never stopped, even when I've been on vacation or sick. There's three day, there was three days when I didn't update because I got banned for three days. Uh, that's one reason to not put all of your marbles in one basket. Uh, if you're an Instagrammer or YouTuber, uh, don't put all, make sure you have a website. You can always, I can always take this website anywhere I want to. It's WordPress, WordPress is movable. Uh, Wix, Weebly, uh, some of those other ones, they are not. They're, they're stuck on that platform. With WordPress, you can take it anywhere. So anyway, um, I built Enibuzz up. I built it from a website and a Facebook page. Now I've got 7,000 people following me on Instagram, 3,500 on Twitter. We've got a YouTube channel. We've got a mobile app with 14,000 installs. Everything on this and those other things feeds into that mobile app. It keeps everybody updated. The point of Enid Buzz was there's so much stuff going on in Enid, and yet the most popular phrase in town was there's never anything to do in Enid. So I set out to prove that there was always something to do, and that's why I was updating Enid Buzz Facebook page every hour because there was just so much going on. And so I wanted to be the hub where if you wanted to know what was going on with the Symphony, Gaslight, NWOSU, the city of Enid, anywhere in town, People didn't have time to go to all those Facebook pages and all those websites. They needed a central location to get all that information quick. And that's what Enid Buzz, I wanted Enid Buzz to be. Um, so I post all the concerts, um, you know, all the business openings and closing. I stick with lifestyle, business, that stuff. I kind of stay away from the hard news, um, you know, investigative news. That, that's the newspaper, that's not me. And so, um, so I kind of found my lane and that's where I, uh, Enid Buzz kind of got built up. And so, uh, but the thing that I needed to sustain Enid Buzz was the advertisers. And that's why I, I built the business directory and added more spots here at the top on the site for advertisers. And so with advertisers in Enid Buzz, it works both ways. I need them to advertise on Enid Buzz to pay my bills. I've been so lucky that it got so popular so quick that I didn't have to have a sales staff because the advertisers came to me and just said, how can I advertise on Nina Buzz? And so I would just put their ads on. But what we eventually found out too was that the advertisers needed me because I very quickly was able to reach a lot of people and had no overhead because I didn't have a sales team or anything. I worked at home, I didn't have an office, so I could keep my advertising rates low. And so a lot of people relied on me, the new, new businesses in town, the mom and pops that needed, organizations, churches that had never advertised before. Now there was a venue that they could come to and advertise and reach a lot of people. And so that's what made Enid Buzz so popular and so profitable uh, really quick. And so um, what I found out though was with all the advertisers that I got was they started asking me about other marketing things like can you build me a website, can you build, do me a logo, can you place my Facebook and my Google ads and sometimes I would try, sometimes I would just have to tell them no and when I would try I would usually not get their websites and their things done on time and it became very frustrating and so I eventually got to the point where I just tried to avoid the whole conversation until one day at the end of last year, Frank Baker came to me with this brilliant idea of forming a digital ad agency. So we have formed Enid Buzz Media and Marketing and I continue to handle Enid Buzz Media, which is all of this that I've just described. Frank is now director of uh, Enid Buzz Media and Marketing and he handles more of the marketing side. Kathy's on board and she does the sales and the creative and, and the event type of things. And we're just getting this going. So Frank is gonna come up and tell you about some of the new things that Enid Buzz Media and Marketing is gonna be able to offer.